This is just so great, man, I'm telling you. Seth Abraham called me up on the phone one day. He said, I got an idea, Big D. He said, let's put together a series to bring about one champion. He said, everybody's clamoring for it. I'm daring enough to do it. I said, well, let's go with it. In 1986, King staged a heavyweight unification tournament for HBO, showcasing a prodigy not among his stable. But that would change. Tyson suffered a series of emotionally destabilizing setbacks. Customato, his founding trainer, died in 1985. Jimmy Jacobs died in 1988. He was an emotional wreck. King was at Jimmy's funeral circling like a vulture. King moved and, and got his talons into Tyson. King then began to fill him in with this brainwashing about how he should be with a black promoter and all the terrible things that I was doing to him, lies. Everything was black, black power, power to the people, but his whole life was white, his whole staff is white. King signed Tyson in October of 1988, then gained the troubled fighter's trust by protecting his $35 million in assets from Tyson's estranged wife, Robin Gibbons. If the partnership gleaned hundreds of millions over the next decade, the split was less than even. I never had a lawyer in my best interest unless it was his lawyer. My accountant was his accountant. Don would write a check. He'd put the description on it, and it would say OTT or CBMT. CBMT meant charge back Mike Tyson. OTT meant off the top. What he would do is, OK, Mike, your purse was $20 million. We had $10 million of expenses. So there's 10 million left, and then we split it. Despite earning huge purses under King's watch, Tyson's emotions were operating near the poverty level. He fell on February 10th, 1990, to a 42-to-1 underdog. Unbelievable! Buster Douglas is the new heavyweight champion of the world! What you do to Mike Tyson, man? He got what you, next thing I know, is crawling on the ground looking for his mouthpiece. He's broke. $120 million. Ain't no other athlete alive got that kind of money in 18 months. You can lead a horse to the water, but you can't make him drink. You know what I mean? I still got all mine. <laughs> King sailed on while Tyson sank even further. A highly publicized rape conviction in 1992 netted him three years in prison. When Tyson was released, King jumped back on the gravy train, promoting six fights for purses totaling $140 million. I found out who someone who I believed was my surrogate father, my brother, my blood figure. And he turns out to be the true Uncle Tom, the true sellout. He did more bad to black people than any white promoter ever did in the history of boxing. Tyson, with me, was making 30 million, 40 million a fight. Now he's left me. If I'm the bad guy, why ain't he making some money? The night before Tyson got out of prison in Indiana, King convinced him to sign a long-term contract. The mistake Mike Tyson made twice. He went with Don King in 1988, and then in 1995, he went back to King. Those two choices were Tyson's responsibility. In 1998, Tyson slapped King with a $100 million lawsuit, claiming the promoter had cheated him out of tens of millions. The action is still pending. Regardless of whether they cast dispersions, castigate, vilify, or character assassinate, I'm going to continue because the greatest thing anyone can have is to have his family by him. I know his wife would love for him to come home and sit back and enjoy time with her and the family, his grandkids. But I don't see that happening. I see Don promoting until the very last breath. He still has people around him that you would not want in your home. He's never really left that corner in Cleveland where he ran the numbers. We were fighting publicly, and I hadn't seen King in a while. All of a sudden, I hear out of nowhere, Lou DeBella, my main man! How you doing, Lou? I still love you. And my wife turned around and she goes, he doesn't seem to dislike you. And I was like, even if he did, you wouldn't know it. <laughs>